Okay, we are live. Let me get my essay pulled up for you. Chipmunk's essay. Going to next. All right, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you one more time, you're going to need to have some colors out. We are going to be color coding an essay today. So you need to have out the following colors. It can be a highlighter, a pen, a crayon, a marker. I don't really care. Colors. You need yellow, blue, red, black, which you can just use a pencil for, orange, green, and purple. Hey. Thank you. That was nice manners. So the past couple of weeks we have been doing writing. We're writing informational essays. Our prompt wanted us to describe the appearance, appearance and behavior. behavior. And the first essay we did was about the woodpecker. woodpecker. And now we're writing about the chipmunk. chipmunk. Okay. So what I did was I took <coughs> some of your sentences that you wrote. And I kind of compiled it together, and we sort of made a class essay, okay? So this is one that I wrote, but it was based on sentences that you wrote that you gave me in class. So what I did was I made a perfect, well, perfect. No essay is ever perfect. Every essay can always be revised, added on to, and made better, okay? But this is a really good fourth grade essay. Um, it's got your introductory paragraph, it has two body paragraphs, and it has a conclusion. How can you quickly look at your essay and tell me that it has four paragraphs with, without really, you know, spending a whole lot of time? How can you quickly do that? Very good. We indent. So every time I wrote a new paragraph, I indented to signal to you that we have four paragraphs. So take your pencil. The first thing we want to do is just take our pencil, and I want you just to lightly number the paragraphs. Let's see if I can. All right, so I'm just going to get my pencil and just kind of out to the side. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, and four. That lets me know we have four paragraphs. I know it's a new paragraph because of that little indention where we scoot it over. <coughs> All right. Now I have a color coding chart that we're going to use as a guide. And we're going to start with a yellow. So get your yellow. It can be a highlighter, it could be a color pencil, a marker. Now I know that yellow is a really light color. And so for yellow, if, if you have a yellow, you can probably um, draw or write over the words. So if you'll take your yellow, I'm going to get my yellow, make it a little, I'm going to get my highlighter yellow. <coughs> highlighter yellow. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the hook. So before we just start coloring, let's think, well, which part of this is the hook? It says, squeak, squeak. That's the sound of a chipmunk. Have you ever seen a chipmunk in your yard? I have, and it was really cute. The text excerpts from the chipmunk. Okay, so where does my hook start and stop? What's the first word of my hook? Squeak. Okay, so my hook starts with squeak, and then it keeps going. What's the very last word of my hook? Peyton, what's the last word of my hook? The very last word, the very last word is, cute. is cute. Okay, 
So what I did was I took some of y'all's, I know the squeak squeak, that was Dakota, and then some of y'all asked a question and I combined those to make sort of a longer hook. Instead of just asking a question, I stretched it out to make it longer. So take your yellow and we're gonna highlight squeak squeak, that's the sound of a chipmunk. Have you ever seen a chipmunk in your yard? I have, and it was really cute. If you need a yellow, if you'll just raise your hand and we will help you out. Awesome. Okay, once you do that, I want you to pick up your pencil and we are going to write with our pencil out to the side. We're going to write hook. Or you can put it's the AG. What's AG stand for? Attention grabber. Awesome. Attention grabber. Attention grabber or hook. It kind of has two names. That's what kind of draws the reader in and gets us excited about reading this essay. All right, now you're going to need a blue. So get a blue. Okay, I'm noticing that some of you have a color pencil or a highlighter, and some of you might have like a marker. Um, you're gonna have to think, if I take a dark blue marker and I color over my words, am I gonna be able to read them very well? No. So I think that just underlining with blue is gonna be your best option. So I'm gonna get my blue. And we're just going to underline the sentence that tells the title and the author. How do I know it's the title? Because it's in what? In quotation marks. In quotation marks. All right, so take your blue and we're going to underline. The text excerpts from the chipmunk by John Burroughs and the video, The World of Chipmunks, explain many interesting facts about chipmunks. So my second sentence, I let everybody know the title and the author. What sort of our cute abbreviation for title and author? What two letters do we use? Tell me. T-A. So right out here in the front, I want you to put T-A. That's our title and author. <coughs> awesome job. Next color, you need a red. Get your red. Yes, sir. Can I sharpen my red? It's very dull. Um, you're not really going to need it a whole lot, so you're not really coloring it. But if you feel the need, then you can change it. All right. So for our third sentence, this is where we're going to have our thesis. Remember, how do you find the words for your thesis? You do what? Three, main idea. Good, it's the main idea. And where do we get the words? We look back at the prompt. Yes, we restate the prompt. All right, so here it is. The main idea is to describe the appearance and behavior of chipmunks. So get your red. And once again, underlining is probably going to be your best bet. If you do have a colored pencil and you want to lightly shade over the words, that's fine too. But you still want to be able to read the text. You don't want to color it out. So I'm going to underline that sentence. And then I'm going to write thesis out to the side. Okay, so write the word thesis next to your um, red sentence. And now, guess what? We have written an intro paragraph. In that very last sentence, in your thesis sentence, I want you to take your red and I want you to circle the word appearance and circle the word behavior. You are letting the reader know that you're going to write a body paragraph about the appearance and then you're going to write a body paragraph about the behavior of the chipmunk. 
then you want to go in that order. Okay? So however you list it in your thesis, if you said about the behavior in appearance, you would write about behavior first. But we put appearance first, so we want to come down here and we want to write about the chipmunk's appearance. All right. So I'm going to take my red and I'm going to come right here and I'm going to circle the word appearance. So let me know, this is my first reason I'm saying I'm writing about the appearance. And if you want to go ahead and do this with me, I'll take my paper down. Come down to paragraph three and take your red and circle the word behavior. Whoopsies. Oops. Circle the word behavior. And that will let you know, okay, I told you in my thesis I'm going to write about appearance, and then I'm going to write about behavior. Those are your reasons that you're writing about. Okay, we need to get out a green. Green, we're going to use green to mark the transition words. When you start your body paragraph, you want to begin your body paragraph with transition words. So on paragraph two, what transition words did I use? I used what? To begin. To begin. So put that in green. I don't know why I always put a box around my transition words. You can circle it, underline it, color over it. Here's your transition. That's my transition word. All right, then I want to take my pencil. And normally what I do is transition is a really long word, so I just put trans word. Since transition is kind of a long one. Trans word. know our source the video the world of chipmunks so what color did we do our text or our source right here we did it blue, blue. okay so we're going to go back to our blue so get your blue get your blue and we're going to put video the world of chipmunks and every time that you see the author's name the title of the video or the title of the text, we're going to underline it blue, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now. So just sort of skim through, and anytime you see right here, the text excerpts from the chipmunk, it's in blue. A clue that it's the title is it's because it's in the quotation marks. Right okay. right yes, where does it say Burroughs? Right down from the... Oh, after behavior. After behavior. Okay. After behavior. All right, so I have Burroughs. That's our author's last name. We talked about this briefly last week. Our author is John Burroughs. Now, you can use his whole name. You can say John Burroughs States, or you can just use his last name and say Burroughs States. But you don't want to call the author by their first name, okay? So either use the whole name or just the last name. All right, so with my blue, I've got Burroughs. That's his last name. The text by Burroughs. The video, The World of Chipmunks. Awesome. So throughout both of my body paragraphs, you see that I'm giving credit to either the video or to the author, to his text. You have to let your reader know where you're getting these facts and this information. You can't just make it up in your head. Yes, sir? When I was skimming over the uh, mm -hmm. in, in the last paragraph of two, 
means that chipmunks had a a tidy, tidy appearance. Yes, absolutely. Because that whole paragraph is about the appearance. Very good. All right, I think we're finished with our blue. Let's go ahead and go back to green. What was I using green for? That was for my transition. Okay, so we said in paragraph two, I start with two begin. What about in paragraph three? In addition. In addition. And in my conclusion paragraph, paragraph four, all I used all in all. All in all. Every time you do a body paragraph or your conclusion paragraph, you want to indent and then use a transition word. And these are three of my favorites for this type of essay. I feel like it really flows well with these transition words. All right. So our next color we want to use is black or your pencil. We do not want to color over our words with the black. We want to just underline so that we can still read what the text says. We're going to use black for our text evidence. Now, your text evidence is the facts that come from the text. And in this case, we also watched a video, so it could also be facts from the video. All right, now let's talk about that. When you copy a sentence word for word and you don't change anything about it, it's called a direct quote. Very good. And you have to also put that in with quotation marks. If you take something from the text or something from the video, because for the video we really just listened, and we also made some inferences and observations with what we saw from their pictures, especially about the appearance. So we weren't really copying anything. If we take it and we put it in our own words or we just sort of make an inference about something based on that source, we've already said it, it comes from the text or it comes from the video, but we don't really have to put that in quotation marks. All right, so let's take our black and let's see what are some of our facts that we got from um, our sources. So first of all, one fact was chipmunks are small furry creatures with pouches in their cheeks. Oh, I missed a blue one right here. The video also explained chipmunks vary in size from 4 to 11 inches. Okay, here's a direct quote. Clean, pert, dapper creatures. We talked about those words, pert and dapper. Clean, pert, dapper. Those are synonyms. What do synonyms mean? The same. The same. They're dapper. very similar. Dapper was in one of our stories in the Missouri Nature book. Mm -hmm. Dapper. This word right here. Dapper. Dapper means you're like well dressed, you're clean in appearance. All right. I'm just gonna stop right. I'm gonna stop right there before we move on to the next paragraph. All right. I want to show you how we can incorporate the text evidence, the facts from the text, sort of with what we call our support. So get an orange for me. Get orange. All right, don't, don't underline anything right now. I just want you to watch and listen to me. Okay, I don't want you to be concerned with trying to underline something. I just want you to watch and listen to me. Okay? Put your markers in. All right. This is something I feel like I just kind of quickly talked about, but I haven't really gone into detail. So when you are writing your paragraph, yes, you have to have facts from your source, from the video, from the text. But then you kind of have to put it in your own words and you have to show that you understand what that means. You can't just copy what the author says. You have to let the reader know, oh, I, I understand what that means. So let me show you an example. 
So right here we said chipmunks are small furry creatures with pouches in their cheeks. Well, I think to myself, why is that important? Why do they have pouches? So this is me interpreting that text evidence. I'm interpreting it by saying the pouches are useful for storing food. Okay, that was something that I made an inference about based on watching the video and reading the text. Um, it explained that chipmunks can vary in size from 4 to 11 inches. That's the text evidence. The text said that. So what can I infer about that? Well, I can come up with the fact that chipmunks can be several different sizes. So that's sort of my words. That's, we call it the support. Okay? Then it says chipmunks are clean, pert, dapper creatures. Now, I'll be honest with you. I had to Google the word pert and dapper. I had heard those words before, but I wanted to double check and make sure. Pert and dapper, remember we talked about these. Pert, that was like that shampoo that some people use called Pert Plus. So pert, clean. Dapper, when I think about the word dapper, I think about a man who's all dressed up. Like um, when Bo was in a wedding and he wore a really, really nice outfit. It wasn't a suit, but it was suit pants with a bow tie and suspenders and a crisp white shirt. Okay? He was quite dapper that day. Some of you on picture day, when you dressed up on picture day, you were quite dapper. Okay? You were more put together than, you know, our daily wear. All right. So the text said clean, pert, dapper creatures. So what's my support? What are my words? My words are this means chipmunks have a tidy appearance. So with the black, and I'm going to go back, I don't think I did this. With my black, I'm going to write the word text evidence. And then with my orange, I want to write support. Okay? All right, now I want you to do that on your paper. So get your orange. And after you have their text evidence, the next sentence needs to be support. It needs to be you telling your own words sort of what that means. This is me. with mine. Alright, just looking at this paragraph. So you should have the same orange that I have. So your support, these are my words, this is me interpreting the text evidence. The pouches are useful for storing food. That should be orange. Okay. Chipmunks can be several different sizes. That is me interpreting the text. That is my support. That's orange. And 
This means that chipmunks have a tidy appearance. That's me interpreting the text. Interpret means like telling what it means. Okay. All right, we good? Almost. All right, so who can tell me what does it mean when I say text evidence? What does that mean? Where do you get text evidence? What does that mean, Andrew? What does that mean? It, I think it means like um, you get like some evidence from the text and then yes. put it into your essay. Yes, absolutely. So when we say text evidence, that means we are getting a sentence from the text. Now, I'll be honest with you. Most of the time when you write, you're not going to have a video, okay? Most of the time, it's going to be two different passages that you read, and you pull text evidence from both of those passages. This was just sort of an interesting beginning to the year where they threw in a video for us, okay? So most of the time, it'll just be two different passages. This time, we had a passage and a video, so when you get your text evidence, that is the facts that you learn from what you have viewed, either from the text you read or from the video you watched. What do I mean when I say support? After you have your text evidence, you have to get some support. What does that mean? It means that you're like helping, like you're blocking it with your help. Yeah, you're helping it along. And when you do your support, that's in... How do you write your support? It's written in your, your words, okay? It's you sort of explaining what it means. It's like saying, hey, I read this book, and in my own words, it means blah, 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 okay? All right, we're going to do the same thing in paragraph three. We're going to look for the text evidence. Now, how do I know it's text evidence? Because I start that sentence off by either using the... And not the invention. Okay, let me say that again. When it's, text, when it's text evidence, I'm going to start the sentence by telling you the author, the author's name or the name of the title. title of either the video or the text. Okay? All right. So, in addition, chipmunks have many different behaviors. That is my words just letting you know, hey guys, this paragraph's about behaviors. Burroughs states, and now look, right here, it's in quotation. quotation marks. So what does that mean? Why did I put it in quotation marks? Because I did what, Miranda? You took it from the text. Absolutely. I copied it word for word from that text. So we need our black or your regular pencil. Text evidence. The chipmunk is quite a solitary creature. Good. Underline that right now. And out to the side, I want you to write text evidence. That's your text evidence. I copied that sentence straight out of the text. Now, after you copy straight out of the text, can you just move on to another text evidence? No. No, what do you have to do? You have to interpret it. You have to show, hey, I picked that sentence for a reason. I know what those words mean. Solitary. We've talked about that word. What does it mean if something is solitary? It means alone. It means alone. So get your orange. We're going to switch between black and orange. Okay? And when you're writing, after you do a sentence of text evidence, you have to put a sentence in your own words to show, hey, I know why I picked that text evidence. There's a reason. The reason is this shows that chipmunks like to, what I write? They like to live in burrows alone. They like to live or burrow alone. So take your orange and underline that sentence. And then you can write support. 
So it's a little pattern. We have text evidence support. Text evidence support. Black and orange kind of go back and forth in our paragraph. Text evidence support. After your text evidence, you want to write a sentence in your own words to let everybody know, hey, I know what that means. Okay? All right. So I'm back to the text by Burroughs. So what color do I need to pick up now? I need my black. Black. All right. Here's another fact. This is something that I learned. Chipmunks hibernate from December to March. That's a fact. We call that text evidence. I'm just going to put T-E. Text evidence. It's a fact. That's my text evidence. I learned that because I read the text. All right, after my text evidence, uh-oh, I made a mistake. What did I forget? I forgot to put in some what? Function. No, I forgot to put in my support. So I'm going to have to, that was an uh-oh. I'm going to have to go back and add in a sentence there later. That's one reason it's good to go back and check your work and color code. I didn't do any support. Oops. All right. The video, The World of Chipmunks, explains. If it's coming from the video, that means it's another fact, another text evidence. So what color do I need there? I need black, right? Chipmunks are omnivores. Because they eat seeds, berries, frogs, and insects. So that's some more text evidence. And they also eat nuts. Nuts. Nuts, seeds, berries, frogs, and insects. Alright, so I'm going to keep a mental note that this paragraph was not perfect, I'm going to have to go back and revise it when I have extra time. We're getting there. All right. Conclusion paragraph. Conclusion paragraph. So right now, for our conclusion, what we want to do is we kind of want to summarize. We want to restate our thesis. And we want to have a memorable ending. Very good. So restate your thesis. So let's get your red. In your thesis sentence, what did we say we were writing about in this um, essay? We were writing about the appearance, appearance and behavior. Okay, here we go. Did I put the word appearance and behavior in there? Yeah. I sure did. So for my conclusion, we have all in all, the appearance and behavior of chipmunks set them apart from other forest creatures. Have you ever gotten a chipmunk and a squirrel confused before? I wonder if you will be able to spot a chipmunk in your backyard. So we call that a memorable ending. In my mind, I kind of think of, that, think of it as like a reverse hook. When you get down to the end, you kind of want to leave the reader wanting a little bit more. Um, give them an I wonder, I hope. You can do a hope for the future. In the future, I hope. I decided to ask a question, which I don't do very often, but I thought it was um, a good way to end this essay. And then I did an I wonder. So get your purple. And for our purple, we're just going to underline these last two sentences. And then you can put M-E, which stands for memorable ending. Is that your favorite part? Yeah. Memorable ending is, is a good way to end it. All right. Now, we have color-coded 
our chipmunk essay. Some of you have not quite finished writing your chipmunk essay, and I think that a lot of you are on your conclusion paragraph. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull out your writing, and I want you to make sure that you are finished with your chipmunk essay. Got it? All right, do it. That's what we're doing now. Um, you said 